did have lunch. What time did you folks leave last night? Oh, don't even mention it. <laughs> don't lose your books. Over breakfast, you know, before they put the armor on. Tell me something, Cole. Mm -hmm. My name mean anything to you when you heard it over the phone? No, I'm afraid not. Should it have? Gee, to a certain degree of fame. I'm a writer. Oh. Have you heard of a book called Star Reach? No. Disaster? No, but then I don't get a chance to read much fiction. Yeah. Well, can't expect to enlighten everybody with two brilliant thrusts. <laughs> If you read anything at all, you'd know that Star Reach was serialized in the Post, it was Book of the Month, and MGM bought it from its galleys for a picture. Disaster is on the bestseller list for 34 weeks, and Fox is shooting it right now. You must be very successful. I'm King Midas. Oh, I'm delighted to hear that. I like to experiment my work now and then, and I can run into a little money. <sighs> that whimper you just heard was my wallet. Maybe I picked the wrong architect. Maybe. How did you happen to pick me? I ran across this in a magazine in a dentist office. I like it. Oh, yeah. No, that's the only house I haven't wanted to tear down and start all over again. I know what you mean. Someday, I hope to get my publisher to stop sending me galley proofs. Every time he does, I try to rewrite the whole stupid book. So, how do we go from here? Well, first, how much do you want to spend? I'd like to keep it under a uh, hundred grand. Well, we'll certainly do something with that. Of course, it depends on the kind of house you want and whether or not we can agree on it. At a hundred grand, you disagree? Well, it's possible. Are well, you one of these temperamental artists? <laughs> if you want to call it that. You see, the kind of house I design won't advertise you, it'll advertise me. I can't afford to have a dull house go up with my name on it. Well, you ought to understand that, Alter. Who gets the review? You or your editor? More coffee? Uh -huh. No, thank you. Good hips, that girl. All right, let's say our tastes agree. Mm -hmm. Now what? Well, I want to see your lot, of course, but you know, first I'd like to read your book, uh, Star Reach. The second one was better. But aren't first ones usually autobiographical? Right, boy, you do read a little, don't you? Well, before I go to the drawing board, I have to know everything about you. So far, all I know about you is, well, you like coffee and hips. Well, there are some closets I don't want to open. I'm no stool pigeon. I suppose you think the book's lousy. Well, let's not look for trouble before we start. There'll be plenty of that anyway. It sounds like a kidney operation. No, no, it's not that bad, really, but... You know, Walter, designing a house for somebody... You know, it's a very personal thing. I like you, Cole. You like me? I'm not sure yet. I think I will. I'm not asking you to marry me. Oh, I'd have to refuse. <laughs> Hi there, Larry. Hi, Felix. 
Eve called, said you forgot the meat order. I told Harry to have it ready. Oh, thanks. How'd you like the party last night? Didn't care for it very much, Larry. Of course, I may be old-fashioned, but I think Bud goes a little far, don't you? Well, how do you mean? Well, you know, those jokes he tells. I took Betty right out of the room. Now, I'm not approved, Harry, but there's no place at a party for that kind of innuendo suggestion. I think Bud's harmless. Well, maybe I'm just old-fashioned. Maybe you are. Okay. Miss, uh, Miss, I think you walked off with my car. No, I'm sure I... I'm sorry, I must have been daydreaming. Don't you think it might be easier if we wheeled it over to your car? I guess it would. You're Patrick's mother, aren't you? I saw you at the bus stop this morning. I'm David's father. Oh, yes, Betty Anders was talking about you. Oh. How do you like the book? I haven't started it yet. Oh, well, I started it, but... But what? Well, as women seem false to me, I don't know. Just seem shallow somehow, so I never finished it. You'll be delighted to hear that. Oh, do you know it? I'm doing a house for him. Oh, that's right. You're the architect. You must be a good one. Betty said you won a prize. <laughs> a long time ago. How do you like the neighborhood? Hmm? I thought you just moved in. Oh, last month. It's fine. People are pretty much the same everywhere. Well, uh, I guess that's everything. I'm sorry I stole your groceries. You're not so pretty. I have to go. Afternoon, Mrs. Gall. Nice woman. Very pleasant manner. Give me milk now. How much? Now well, you drink this much and then you can tell me a secret. No, that much. Okay, let me see you do it. Larry, is Mr. Alder as solemn as he is in the picture on that book? No, no, not at all. I kind of like him, Eve. I think he's willing to take a chance and let me do the house I really want to do. Well, that's the important thing, isn't it? Yeah, with enough money so I don't have to worry where to put the plumbing. Boy, will that be a relief. Well, I'm glad you made a good impression. I was afraid you'd get over there and not understand the word he was saying. What do you mean? Well, I don't know. I just thought you'd have a head this morning. Got a head? Everybody's got a head. Have you got a head, Peter? <laughs> really, Larry? You knew you had an important appointment. A couple of martinis never hurt anybody. They make me nervous. You just think they do. Martinis don't mix with S-E-X. What's X-E-X? Never mind, you just drink your milk. Is it like Santa Claus? Well, in a way, son. In a way. <laughs> Is Daddy doing a house for Santa? No, darling. He's doing a house for a writer. I'm glad this is what you want, Larry. Oh, I'm happy. I think it's going to be very exciting. I'm glad. Guess what? What, Peter? Guess. You lost a tooth. No, but I went to bed again last night. Oh, you better be more careful, son. This was not my Liz. Oh, that must be, uh... <laughs> there was a slight mix-up at the market between me and this gorgeous blonde. Oh, really? Mm. Who? Uh, Patrick's mother. Oh, yes, Margaret Galt. Betty told me about her. I hear she's very beautiful. Drags me home from the party early, says he's tired. So I get all set to watch television. But not Felix. He has to carry me upstairs like a regular hero. You know, I swear that man's got one thing on his mind day and night. <laughs> you know, it's getting so lately that I go out to lunch so he won't come home for lunch. <laughs> I guess they're all alike, though. Is Ken that way? Yes, he's that way. There are times when my husband bores me stiff. Does Ken bore you? No, never. He's always very interesting. Well, a girl like you. You know, you're so beautiful, sometimes I can't even stand you. 
Well, old octopus will be home for lunch soon. I better get a move on. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Wagner. Thank you. Thanks for the coffee, Margaret. Sure. Get a chance. Come on over later. Okay. Hello. You. How did you get my number again? No, never. It. I'll call the police if you don't stop calling me. Margaret, shouldn't Patrick be home by now? Yes, he'll be home soon, Mother. Why they keep him awfully long nowadays? When you would rather not wait for him. It's perfectly all right. I'm sure he only gets in your way. Oh, I love to have him with me. As a matter of fact, I wish you'd let him stay all night with me once in a while. It gets awfully lonely in the valley all by myself. All by yourself, Mother. Who was on the phone, dear? Just one of the women, a neighbor. Something wrong? You seem disturbed. No, nothing's wrong, Mother. If you don't mind, I, I've got a lot of things I've got to do. If I can help in any way. It's a little late, isn't it? I'm interested, Margaret. I simply want You're interested in me. Don't judge me. I'm not to be judged by you. I'm still your mother, you know. Yes, I'm in a way. Yes, Margaret, I am. And I know a little bit more about life and living than you might imagine. I imagine you know a great deal about life and living, Mother. Oh, you're a very cold person, Margaret. I never could talk to you. I used to wonder when it all happened how I'd be able to explain it to you when you were old enough to listen. How I could make you understand what honest-to-God love could do to a woman. Of course, it was pure and beautiful. I'm not a tramp, Margaret. Please understand that. I'm not a tramp. What happened to me could happen to any woman. I don't want to hear it. Do you know what I wish, Margaret? I wish you'd really fall in love someday. I am in love, Mother. With my husband. Yes, of course. Margaret, you married the first nice boy that came along. Mom! Maybe it was my fault, but... Excuse me, Mother. Mom! Good morning. I think we've got a box of cornflakes that belongs to you. I read that book last night. Oh, how'd you like it? I saw what you meant. He doesn't see the world very clearly, does he? Well, all he needs is a good house to live in. Had to give him lots of windows. Say, so listen, I'm on my way now to take a look at his property. Would you like to come along? No. Just thought you might be interested. Well, I am, but... It's not very far. No, not this morning, thank you. Maybe some other time, huh? Change your mind. Is this something you do all the time? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? I don't know. Ask a perfect stranger to... I just feel odd sitting here with someone I don't even know. I'm David's father. <laughs> you feel better now? <laughs> I suppose someone should see us. Oh, well, we'll have to tell them the truth. They were running off to Mexico together. <laughs> Would you mind turning back, please? Hmm? Are you serious? Yes. Ah, okay. I'm sorry, I just don't feel right. That's okay. I saw one of your houses. Hmm? 
The one in better homes and gardens. Well, I like the way the fireplace was standing free in the middle of the room like that. You know, that's a caveman concept of architecture. A roof over your head, holes to look out of, and a fire to huddle by. Mm. It was a strange house. Well, it was just an experiment. Oh, we... no, I liked it. Mm. It had strength and confidence. How did you come across such an old issue? Betty told me her house was in it, and I... I looked it up in the library yesterday. Look, this is silly. You don't really want to go back, do you? Hmm? Beautiful. Walter certainly picked himself a spot. But it's so naked. You must remember, Mexico's a very primitive country. That's right. <laughs> Here, take this end and go out to that point, right by that boulder there. Okay. Watch out for the brush. All right. Will it go that far? Sure it will. Okay. How are you going to do it? Do what? If you put a house up here, it'll roll right down into the street. We'll have to anchor it to a cloud. Oh. Stay right there and hold it tight while I go over to the other side. Yes, sir. the smell of earth. Mm, I do, too. Well, that about does it. Oh, you mean that's all? Just the beginning. What's it going to look like? I think I know. You've been very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe you better drop me off here. I'll take you to your door. No, please. This would be fine. Yeah, maybe you're right. Is this okay? Yes, thank you. I'm glad I came along. So am I. Goodbye. to ask you the same question. I'm Larry Coe. Oh, sure. Come in. Thank you. So you're the architect, huh? That's who I am. Well, I'm Marsha. Hello, Marsha. Well, um, let's hear some of your plans. <laughs> Where's Alter? Well, the genius, he's working. Would you like a drink? Uh, no, thanks. It's a little too early. Do you mind if I have no, one? No, please. What's he working on? The Fall of a Stone. You like that title? Are you, um, married or something? Yes, I'm married or something. Choke. <laughs> You're missing a lot, architect. Maybe we both are. 
Maybe you better tell Alter I'm here, huh? What? You snap off my head? You think I'm crazy? Larry, I thought I Hi, Raj. Been here long? No, I just got here. You're still here? I thought you left long now, ago. Now, how can I leave? I'm your inspiration. Sure, baby, I had you disillusioned you. You need all the inspiration you can get, uh -huh. believe me. Go fly a kite, will you, sweetheart? Had your breakfast yet? And lunch? Lunch? What time is it? After three. Oh, no wonder I'm so hungry. I've been at this thing since four o'clock. I can't get it right. And you won't. Look, uh, Marsha, whatever your name is, would it hurt your career if you kind of cleaned up the joint? My talent doesn't lie in that direction. You haven't got any talent. You don't have any talent. I don't. You see, he gets lucky with a couple of books. All of a sudden, he's an important American writer. I am an important American writer. <laughs> the critics said he wrote with facilities, but he hasn't got a thing to say. The critics, I eat them like the pieces of cheese they are. He's dying because they pan his books. It kills him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I cry all the way to the bank, okay? All right, now go someplace and practice your fast draw. We're all out of Holland gin. I can understand it. You got to get rid of that miserable lush. I'd like to go over those sketches with you, Raj. Not a laugh, that kid. Oh, sit down and have something to drink, man. No, thank you. Let's get to work. I got a few appointments with some builders. Do you have any trouble reading the sketches? No, oh, I, I read them fine. Right. It's pretty different from the house I saw in the magazine, isn't it? Well, you didn't expect the same house, did you? I don't know what I expected. You're the architect. You've said so often enough. What's the matter with you all of a sudden? Nothing. No, there's something eating you. What is it, Raj? I showed your sketches to some friends of mine. Said I have to be nuts to live in a house like that. Well, who's going to live in it? You or these friends of yours? That's not the point. Not the point. Nobody lives in a vacuum. I want a lot of cars stopping other people getting out, pointing at this oddball house, say, hey, that's where that kooky writer lives. Well, what do you want, a house like everybody else's? If the house in the magazine need... wasn't like everybody else's. I designed that house for a Fresno lawyer with four kids. This house is for you. Sure. What if I have to get rid of it? Suppose my next book flops. The book after that. What I do then? Wait for a 36-year-old writer with a mustache to come along so I can unload it? What do you want from me? A guarantee that you'll be successful all your life? <laughs> sure, what difference does it make to you? You design a house, up it goes. You get 10%, good or bad, right? And the book, it's different. Raj. I get readers, I get Raj. reviews. Raj, would you like me to call your girlfriend back? Well, maybe you'd like to slap her around because I'm too busy to play scapegoat. What do you mean? I'm trying to discuss your house. Your house, Alter. Oh, forget it. All right, I made a mistake. When I met you, you know, I told my wife, here's a guy who'll be willing to try something different. Boy, was I wrong. You want to play it safe. That's not true. And what are you afraid of? That some critic won't like your house? This has nothing to do with the lousy critics. You know, Raj, we both start with the same thing. A blank piece of paper. But every time I try to play it safe, I come up empty. So now I just sit down at that drawing board and do what I want to do. And I hope that what I like, somebody else will like. Maybe this isn't a great house, I don't know. Maybe somebody will think it's an oddball. We can't try to please them all. You're trying to say this is what I do? No, Rod, I don't know what you do. I read both your books. I like them pretty well, but... Boy, I'd love to see what would happen if you really broke loose. You think that's what I want to do? Then do it. Write a book that you like and to hell with the critics. You don't know. Raj, I know one thing. You've got to find out what's important to you. Sure. Now, this house is important to me. And I was hoping you'd like it, but... If you don't like it, we'll shake hands and... Say goodbye. It's as simple as that. know something? I think it's a great house. <laughs> Are you sure I haven't talked you into anything? Yeah, I think you did. Thanks. You know, there are a few improvements I'd like to make. You know, this is an oddball house. Yeah, an oddball character. Look, let's take it one room at a time. Hey, Maggie! Maggie, why something wrong with that? 
No, nothing. How are you? Fine. I feel just like I own Southern California. Alter just gave me the green light on the house. Oh. Of course, he doesn't know it's going to roll down into the street. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Congratulations. I couldn't have done it without you holding the tape. I owe you a commission. How about an ice cream cone or a Coke or something? Thanks, sir. I can't really. I'm late now. Well, I'll owe it to you. It's going to be a very exciting house. Thanks, Maggie. I'll see you, huh? Just get home? No. Why don't you get dressed? Where's Patrick? Betty's keeping him overnight. Oh. I thought we could be alone. I want to wash and change my shirt. Telephone. Important. Don't answer it. What's with you tonight? Please. Okay. That phone's still ringing. Getting dark outside. Tell me you love me. And you know I love you, Margaret. Don't you think I'm pretty? Oh, of course. Well, then why don't... What do you think of me when you're working, Ken? Yes. Well, what do you think? Well, I don't know. I just think well, of you. Do you think of making love to me? I don't talk like that. Well, do you... how do you think of me, then? Margaret, this is silly. You know perfectly well how I feel about you. Tell me you want me. Do you want me? You know I want you, Well, then Margaret. tell me. Talk to me, oh, Ken. Honey, tell me. Honey, honey. Don't you want to hold me? Hold me. Margaret, we can't just... I can't. Oh, please, Margaret, please. I'm sorry to rush things, but boy, I've still got two hours of work tonight. Always changes. Look, I tell you what. Just give us a layout of the plant site and a schematic of one of the factory buildings, and after that, Martin can do the rest. Why does that Martin handle the whole thing? Because it's right down your alley, Larry. Why, you won a prize for doing almost the same oh, thing. Oh, we're back to that again. Well, I just want to illustrate a point. 
That is the point, Stan. I've had it. I don't want to keep doing the same commercial designs over and over. I should think the location alone would interest you. Look, I'm working on a house. I like it. I can't go hopping off to Hawaii. Well, that wouldn't be necessary, would it, Mr. Baxter? Aren't there photographs of the proposed site? Sure there are. Some good ones, too. Well, I prefer to get a feel of the terrain. You know that. Actually, the terrain's no problem here. We've got a good, flat parcel of land. Good night, Mr. Baxter. Well, what do you say, Larry? We figure the job's worth $3,000. I think it's worth more than that. Well, what Larry means is that he's been getting... What I mean is that I'll be working on two jobs simultaneously and trying to give them both my best. It's more than $3,000. How much would you want? I think the job's worth five thousand. Isn't that a shade high for something like this, darling? I think we can go to four. What do you say, Larry? Well, let me think about it, Stan. Huh? Well, what's there to think about? Are two grown men going to start bargaining like fishwives? I like you. Forty-five hundred, Larry. Top offer. We got a deal. All right, it's a deal. Thanks a lot for dinner. My pleasure. I'll call you Monday. Will you send the photos over? As soon as I can get them to you. Why do I let myself get trapped into doing unimportant? Trapped? What do you mean, trapped? What do you think happened tonight? You knew I didn't want that job. I knew nothing of the sort. Why do you think I left Baxter and Braxton? Good question. Beginning to feel like a machine turning out plastic, practical jokes. So again, I let myself get forced into a job that doesn't excite me, doesn't offer any challenge. It's something any hundred architects could handle. I didn't force you into anything. You're right, honey. I'm a big boy. I could have said no. Honey, honey, do you have any concept of what I'm actually trying to do? Apparently not. I'm just a pushy housewife. You think it pleases me that I won a prize back in 1952, eight years ago, and that lousy prize has been the high point of my career? And now you're ashamed of it. No. Well, you talk like you're ashamed no, of it. it's just that I'm not the wonder boy anymore. This is oh, 1960. Oh, Mary, for heaven's sake. Well, time doesn't stand still. You either change or you die. Would you mind telling me how this job is going to kill you? I realize Eve. I'm terribly dense and stupid, but I don't Eve, understand. Look, for once, just try to understand. I didn't want this job because I want to concentrate on the altar house. That's something I want. Something that excites me. I've got things I want to state as an architect. And although I don't get them out of me, I'll, I'll bust. I... You know what I'm trying to say. Do you understand? I understand, Larry, but what comes after the altar house? I think we should be grateful to Mr. Baxter. Heaven knows we can use the extra money. Kids all right? Did they wake up? Uh, We're not a peep either. out of them all night, sis. Well, who's winning? Well, I don't know. Who's playing? It's not quite 11, sis. Do you want me to lift Peter before I go? I'll do it, Linda. Oh. Night, Larry. Good, Good night, night, honey. Sis, there was one little fuss. Daddy? Hey, what are you doing awake? Is it time for school yet? No. Mommy and I just got home. Get back to sleep. Tonight, Peter was messing around with my record player. He broke the needle and scratched up the record. And when I tried to stop him, he got mad and threw one of his blocks at me and almost broke the window. And when I told Lindy, she said it was just an accident. But it wasn't no accident, Daddy. We'll have to talk to him about that. I think you should beat him up. We'll figure something out in the morning, OK? OK. We'll get back to sleep. Daddy? I'll drive you to the bus stop in the morning. Okay, Dad. You got plenty of pencils to write what you want? Yeah. 
You better move over here. Yeah, you wait for him. Look at that. to the lot again. Come with me. Thank you, no. Come with me. No. see you again. Why? You don't even know me. I want to know you. When can you get away? No, I can't. I couldn't. When? Don't ask me. I don't want to. When? Tomorrow night. No. Thursday night. Please don't think that I... Eight o'clock. Where? Will see us. Please hurry. There's a place on the beach on the way to Malibu. It's called the Albatross. I'll find it. Are you sure you want to see me? Yes. Aren't you? No. No, I'm not sure at all. Eight o'clock. Patrick's sound asleep. Good. What time do you think he'll be back? 11, 11.30. I don't really know, Ken. You know how women are when they get together. <laughs> I know. If you'd rather, I didn't go. Well, no, go ahead. Don't be silly. I don't have to go, Ken. Maybe we could get a sitter and, and we could go out somewhere together. I have a lot of papers to go over tonight, Margaret. Now, you go on and have a good time. I suppose I were going to meet another man. Oh, sure, sure. Would it make you jealous? Well, of course it'd make me jealous. But you don't think it's possible, I mean, do you, that I would? You're my wife, Margaret. It happens, you know. Not to someone like you. I'm no different than anyone else can. I've got the same feelings, the same passion. Now, stop that. Don't talk like that. Passion isn't a dirty word, Ken. Margaret, please, you know I don't like to hear you talk like that. Now, come on. You go on and have a good time, okay? If I'm not awake when you get home, I'll see you in the morning. Let's not talk about it, please. 
Would you like a drink? Please. Good. Uh, waiter, what do you drink? Oh, anything. I don't care. What do you drink? Martini? Mm, fine. Uh, waiter, two martinis, please. Yes, sir. It's crowded in here. Look pretty far from home. I don't think we have to worry. The waves are wonderful, aren't they? Mm, they're beautiful. Oh, I, I got a builder for Alton's house, a man named the Lobby. I think he'll do a good job. Start next week. I feel very guilty. Yes, I do. Do you want to leave? No. Good. I thought we'd go through that whole U-turn routine again. <laughs> Thank you. I'm oh, sorry. That's all right. He's nervous, too. <laughs> You like olives? Mm-hmm. Don't you? I love them. Why do you call me Maggie? Doesn't everyone? Mm-mm. Just you. Good. I'll be the only one in the whole wide world to call you Maggie. Hmm. Funny that you should call me that. I guess it's because it's such an ugly name, Maggie. But you make it beautiful. My father used to call me Maggie. What's your favorite name? Oh, I have a lot of favorite names. Uh, Tilly, Zelda, Lizzie, Brunhilde. <laughs> <laughs> you got a silly laugh. No, no, I like it. You ought to use it more often. I want to laugh. I really do. It's a very sexy laugh. Nothing. I, I just want to try saying your name. What shall we drink to? Everything. Like what? Living, doing, being what we want to be. That's all that's important. Isn't that what everyone wants? What do you want? I want to make love to you. feel right this minute. I'm... I'm sorry, I just can't. If you start this, you'll just please don't. Don't kiss me. Please don't kiss me. If you kiss me, I'll... I'll... I... Oh, yes.
Hmm. Can I have some more milk, please? He thinks the study isn't big enough. I won't be too long here. Well, leave his number, will you, in case I have to reach you? He isn't listed, you know. Oh, sure. I'll leave it here by the telephone. Good night, dear. Except in church. But just watch me when I start cutting corners. Don't cut corners on me, Frank. Remember, you're a bugler. You played the song the way I wrote it. Listen, without me, your song don't get played at all. I'm a very important guy. Good. I'll get it, Ken. Hello. No, I, I can't right now. Maybe in a few hours. Bye. Who was that, Margaret? Betty Anders. Did you kill anyone? I don't know. It's hard to tell when everyone's shooting at once. I know. Ken said the same thing. He was in the... He was in the infantry, too. I didn't like the army at all, except for the people I met. <laughs> there was one man in my outfit. He was a magician in civilian life, and he kept all his How did you meet Eve? At a dance. Kept all his tricks in his footlock, and one day the CEO came through with some top brass. Is she a good dancer? Yes, she's a good dancer. I hate to dance. When did you meet her? While I was still in the service, home on furlough. Did you like her right away? Yes, I did. 
Look, Maggie, you know, people aren't born married. They meet, date, go steady, get engaged. The whole natural progression that you and Ken... Oh, why are we talking about this? You love her very much, don't you? Come on, Maggie. Is it painful for you to talk about her? No, but I don't see why we keep on... Is she very bright, Larry? Yes, she is. Do you think she's pretty? What's the next question? Is she better than me? Go ahead, ask it. I'd never ask that. Why not? You've asked everything else. I guess I'm afraid of the answer. Maggie, you never have to be afraid of anything. Never. Kiss me. Kiss me, kiss me, kiss me. What are you guys doing? Figuring out new ways to chisel me? Hey, Rod. Daphne, Larry Cole. Hello. How do you do? Mr. DeLabia. Hello. Want a number? Honey, everybody's got my number. Yeah, I know. Wow. This sure is exciting, isn't it? Don't pay any attention to her. A checker game's exciting. Crazy legs, though. Say, listen, this little group of beavers running around. What's this costing me? Not enough, Mr. Alder. Not like enough. A big Excuse me, I've got some work to do. Not enough. What difference does it make to you? You're King Midas, remember? Sure, King Midas. I'm beginning to feel like your patron. Getting the money from the publisher with one hand and giving to you with the other. See, how's the new book coming? I turned it in last week. Good. Rod, let me read all the best parts. It's wonderful. It's just like poetry. All right, if I go look at your house now, Mr. Cole? Certainly. Sure, baby, you can go look at my house now. Your house, sir. <laughs> Listen, Larry, you know the entrance to the dining room. Look, can I wait until tomorrow, Rod? No, I didn't expect you today, and... Yeah, I'm late now, okay? <laughs> what is it, a blonde or a brunette? Neither. Bald and 50, another potential patron. What's the matter? Don't you like the house anymore? Of course I do. What kind of a crack is that? It's just that it's hard being enthusiastic all by myself. Oh, I'm sorry, Raj, but look, can you stop by tomorrow? We'll walk through the whole thing step by step and work over the rough spots, okay? Sure. Good. And listen, I got a few extras. No extras, extras. no more extras. I'll see you tomorrow. You'll like them. Well, it's expensive wood. I thought I'd put the shutters on the outside, see, so they stand now from the mm -hmm. house, like this. Don't you hate people who draw on tablecloths? Yes. <laughs> well, anyhow, you'll be How able to... How do you shave to... that? How do I shave what? <laughs> that. Oh, it's very simple. You see, I have a tiny little razor mm -hmm. with cylindrical blades, and I put it here like this, see, and I shave it very, very fast. <laughs> oh, you... I promised I would. I'll be right back, okay? Where did you and Harry go last night? Went to a new place. I don't know what It's one of those coffee houses. Oh, you can be the big joints. Real different. They have these bongo players. And just real weird. And yes. Do you want anything? Shove off. Look, Mark, good night. Look, the lady's with me. You better leave. You're not a husband, mister. Why don't you shove off? What's the matter with you? Oh. All right. It's over. All right, it's all over.
want. How do you know your name? He didn't. He did. He called you Margaret. I oh, heard. You must have been mistaken, Larry. Oh, Maggie, I heard him. I never saw him before in my life. Well, then how do you know your name? And what was this? It's Larry, all over. Can we stop this, please. Maggie. truth so terrible? You sure you want to hear it? Yes, I want to hear it. All right. It was this last summer. July. Ken was away on a business trip. And Patrick was staying with my mother. I was alone. Oh, forget it, Meg. You have no right to know. But you have to know, don't you? It was very hot that day. I was sitting out front when a truck went by. The driver waved and he smiled at me. I smiled back. He was the driver? Yes, he was the driver. He came back the next night. I was ironing and he rang the doorbell and asked for a glass of water. He said he was thirsty. I didn't see any harm in it, so he... Came in and he stayed a while. I was so grateful to have someone to talk to. So we talked. He said he was driving the truck for his father. They had a rug cleaning business or something. So what happened? He kissed me. We were standing at the door saying goodnight. Suddenly he grabbed me. He's trembling all over like a baby. Oh, what are we making such a fuss about? There's more, Larry. I got ready for bed after he left. I was in bed when the phone rang. It was him. He said he was coming over. I told him he was crazy, that I was in bed, that I'd call the police, but he... He said he was coming over. Well, why didn't you call the police? I have a young son. I locked all the doors instead. Then I took some sleeping pills and I... Sleeping pills? When you knew he was on his way, you took sleeping pills. I wanted to sleep. I wanted to hide. Go ahead. I was almost asleep when I heard his car pull up. He rang the front doorbell, but I didn't answer it. The pills were beginning to work. I... Couldn't have gotten out of bed if I wanted to. Then I heard him trying the kitchen door. Then I heard the door open. You said you locked it. I did. But somehow he was in the house. He called Margaret from the kitchen. I lay there half drugged, unable to move. Then I heard his footsteps in my room. I couldn't move. I tried to fight him, Larry. I tried. Can you understand that? No, I can't. Why'd you take those sleeping pills? I wanted to sleep. I wanted to hide. I... Why'd you leave the door open? I thought it was locked. The door's either locked or it isn't. You wanted him inside that house, Maggie. You didn't want to hide or sleep. You wanted him to find you. You took those pills to make it easy for yourself. And you wanted what happened. All right, Larry. I wanted him. That's what you really want to hear, isn't it? I wanted him. You...
Mary, would you please come in and settle this? Pete got paced all over David's model, and now David is uh, yelling bloody murder, and I can't do a thing with either of them. All right, honey, I'll be right out. Like that. Well, Peter's younger than you are. I know, but he's got his own toys. Well, he lets you use his toys, doesn't he? Yes. Well, Dave, you should learn to share things with him. Okay. You can't knock a man's home. Hey, Larry. Tell him to Missed Mrs. Gall to the bus stop this morning and asked me if I'd. Uh, is anything wrong? I'm Margaret's mother. Oh, hello. Come in, Mr. Cole. Thank you. Margaret went to bed with a fever last night, and I came oh. from the valley to give her a hand. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You say you're neighbors, are you? Yes, we live down the street. Patrick goes to school with my son. Oh, how nice. Is this your day off, Mr. Cole? No, I'm an architect. I work at home mostly. <laughs> how very convenient. Who is it, Mother? Oh, it's Mr. Coe, dear. Uh, why don't you go on in? Oh. I'm just fixing some coffee. Would you like a cup? Oh, thank you. That'd be very nice. I don't have to know anything. I love you. I love you. I kiss you. <laughs> you catch my bug. I don't care. When will I see you? Will you call me? When will you be all right? I'm fine. I'm fine now. I didn't know what you took in your coffee, Mr. Coe, so I brought all the fixings. What does he take, Margaret? Oh, just... Just cream. happened to you? Yes, Mother. It's happened to me. You know how to read a blueprint. That's not the way the wall was designed. I know, Mr. Cole, but I got it half finished hi. already. I can't help that. Take Anybody it down home? and do it right. Oh, hi, honey. All right, fellas, hold it. Anything wrong? Oh, I just came to see my husband and his house. Good. How do you like it? Why, I think it's wonderful, darling. What is that? That's all to study. Don't you remember I was... Oh, no, 
The sketches, that was on the main level. I think it's more interesting there. Oh, it's, it's marvelous. What of you? How'd you get up there? This is the stairwell. The steps on this side go into the study. On that side, they go into the master bedroom. All that's going to be colored glass. This is the exciting part, isn't it, darling, when it begins to take shape? Are you happy with it? Yes, I think it's going very well. Let me show you the rest of it. Oh, no, darling, I can't now. I've got too many things to do. We're having a party tonight. Party? What's the occasion? Well, it's no occasion. I just thought of it this morning after you left. I don't know. You've been working on this lot all week, and it's Friday night, and I just thought a little fun wouldn't hurt us. I thought you might like to relax. So I'm giving a party. You don't mind, do you? Oh, it's a good idea, a little sudden. Oh, good. I, I asked Felix to save us some good steaks, and I've already started calling people, and... Oh, I'm so glad you don't mind. Well, I've got to go now and call some more people, and I've got to pick up some things, and... And it's a beautiful house, darling. Goodbye. I'll Goodbye. see you later. Don't be late tonight, huh? No, I won't. Hello? Is this Margaret Gold? Yes, this is Margaret Gold. Who's this, please? This is Eve Coe. Hello? Margaret? Are you there? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm here, Mrs. Coe. Well, are, are you all right? Is anything wrong? No, I'm fine. Oh, well, Betty Anders has spoken of you so often, Margaret, and I've been meaning to call you for such a long time. Well, finally, I've gotten around to it, and I was wondering if you and your husband might like to come over tonight. We're having some friends in. I'm sure you must know some of them, and we'd so much like to have you. Well, that's very sweet of you. I, I don't know if we could get a sitter. I've got a whole list if you want it. Well, Ken's very fussy about the sitters we use. <laughs> I can understand that. Well, if you do get a sitter, could you come? Well, I'll ask him. He may have made other plans. Well, do try. Well, if you can come, we'll look for you around eight. All right? Bye. Goodbye, Margaret. Goodbye. Good night, David. It's tight. Good night, David. Drink up, Stan. I should be. I've been commuting to Hawaii for the past two months. Oh, yeah. Oh, they look beautiful. Larry, that schematic you did for us, it was a great job. Oh, I'm glad you're satisfied. As it turns out, it was just a beginning. Yeah? Something new has come our way, Larry. And I think it was offered to us largely on the strength of the job you did. Oh, what is it? Just a city. What? You heard me, a city. A city in Hawaii. We're going to substitute a city for 4,000 acres of jungle. Oh, that's exciting. Housing, roads, industrial parks, the works, just as CERT did in South America on a limited scale. How does it sound? Well, it sounds like an architect's dream. You sending Martin out for it? He can't handle it. We want you to head up the entire project for us. Me? <laughs> well? I don't know what to say. I'm flabbergasted. It's very simple. Just say you'll do it. We figure it'll take about five years of intensive planning. But, Larry, this one will go down in the architectural primers. I can't tell you how grateful we are. My brother said that schematic you did had more imagination than anything the Bauhaus ever came up with. And you know, he just doesn't throw praise around. Five years, that's a long time to be away. Away from what? You'll have Eve and the kids with you. And yeah. boy, will your kids love Hawaii. <laughs> and it'll be great for me having you there, too. And you know how we love Eve. Oh, do me a favor, will you? Uh, don't mention this to Eve. I'd rather tell her myself, huh? Sure. Okay. I understand. Hey, Larry, why? When are you going to put on our steaks? Oh, any time now. Oh, no, 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 not yet. Not until everybody gets here. I hope those steaks are good. Cut them from the cow myself, Eve. The way I figure it, Larry, Ramsey should begin telling one of his little jokes right after his next martini, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Oh, is that what you got to be upset. Oh, darling, you already know Margaret. 
Yes, how, how are you? Do? Nice to see you. You haven't met my husband, I don't think, can you? Hello, Larry. Glad to know you. Darling, would you get the both a drink and I'll put your sure. coat away? Fine, thanks. I think you know everybody here. Oh, 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 Hi, we got any criminal on? You no, know, I, I think it's somewhere down there. Huh? How's it going out there? Why don't you come and take a look? Oh, well, after this batch, everybody's on their own. Hey, go a little easy on that, will you? First drink tonight. I want you sober. No, I'm sober. Sober as a judge. Stay that way. I'll go. Yes. You look a lot like a golf course you've got to work at. You know what I hate? Crabgrass. I hate it. I got a real thing for it. I found the crib, Bob. I wasn't quite sure whether we had any left or not. And what are we girls talking about? Oh, you? girl talk. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Learn something. I like good-looking people, men and women. You know, girls around here, they all look alike. They wear tweed skirts, cardigan sweaters, and pearls. It's dreary. That Soren character that lives next door, mm. I think she must wear a girl up to her neck. <laughs> <laughs> they all, I can't tell them apart. Celery and carrots, gink and gink. I want to make people happy. Felix, hmm? what can I do for you? Oh, no. Thank you very much. Are you happy? Yes, thank you. <laughs> so the next morning, the circus owner goes up to the horse and he says, Hey, what does I hear about you with that zebra? Well, the horse looks up, he's surprised, he says, um, Zebra? <laughs> I thought those were pajamas. <laughs> it was funny the first time I heard. Wait a minute, I got more. So this is tiny. So you got a mask over his face? That's cute. She's always pretty. He's the same age as your son. Oh, that's right. Oh, Isn't that a nice picture, Margaret? Oh, yeah. Larry did a house for the artist about eight years ago, I think. Excuse me, Mrs. Gold? Shall we dance? Oh. <laughs> hey, Larry, tell me something. What's your secret? Your lawn, no crabgrass. You know, I've tried six different crabgrass killers and none of them work. Arthur. I even tried this new stuff that's got the 90% Arthur, who cares about crabgrass? Well, I... <laughs> Arthur, I don't care if crabgrass devours your whole lawn or this entire community. That's a fact. Well, I'm sorry if this I... This whole house may suddenly collapse around our ears and all you want to talk about is crabgrass. What you need is another drink. Now, give me your glass, I'll get you a drink, and we'll, we'll toast to the weeds of the world, OK? Well, Felix, sure, I... that young man up and took him to the other room and gave him a spanking. He's not going to forget. <laughs> My husband will not tolerate that kind of language, not even from a six-year-old. Well, it's hard to know what to do with him. The man works hard all day long, and he comes home tired and angry, and he's supposed to be a good father. And a good husband. Oh, well, yeah, but that's easier. Margaret understands a man's moves. Children can. Are you a moody man, Ken? Well, not excessively so. I think I'm a good husband. I haven't heard any kicks so far. Hey, have you ever been to Hawaii? 
You better not drink anymore, Larry. Yeah, that's what he said. That's remarkable, don't you think? She's lovely, Larry. I like her. Please. Oh, I want to see. Oh, here you are, Margaret. Ken's been looking for you. He wants to go home. Thank you very much, Good night, Larry. It was a lovely party. Good night. Good night, Felix. Good night, Margaret. Pretty woman. Delicious. I've always envied you, you know, Larry? Working at home, I mean. Larry's, you don't have to drive anywhere at the end of the night. Does have its advantages. Larry? Oh, I good really night. Times. Larry was a great party. Thank you very much. Good night. 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 Good you also get a chance to watch the procession. <laughs> what procession is that, dude? The Great American Marching Society, the Itchy Foot Club, tramp, tramp, tramp. And you know who's leading the procession, of course. Who? A woman. Hmm. You don't think much of women, do you, Felix? Oh, I love them. Every last one of them. But they're all the same. They want a romance. There's nothing romantic about the slob they see shaving in his pajamas. You and me, Larry, we're furniture in our own homes. But if we go next door, aha, next door, we're heroes. Guy like you, works at home, you got plenty of opportunity for going next door. Sure, I go next door all the time. A lovely lady is 60, then say, let's have some coffee. Come <laughs> well, on, Larry, you know what I'm talking about. Romance. The romance seekers. They're everywhere, ready to fall in love at the drop of a hat. Any place you got a housewife, you got a potential mistress. Oh, you know, Felix, you're the guy that doesn't even like a dirty joke. I'm a realist. Society says, Felix, you're a one-woman man. I say, yes, of course I am. Want to know something, Larry? I'm a liar. So are you. So is everybody. What are you getting at? Felix? Nothing. I'm just an observer of the human scene. A guy like you, the blondes must come flocking from miles around. Sure, I beat them off at clubs. Never mind the clubs. Just make sure they don't leave any blonde bobby pins around the car. Eve's hair is black, remember? And watch the ashtrays. No lipstick butts that aren't Eve's brand. Or uh, maybe your particular blonde doesn't smoke. You got the wrong man, Felix. Happily married with two kids. Sure, sure. We're all happily married with two kids. Hmm. What's that got to do with your blonde? 
She's happily married, too, but maybe with only one kid, huh? Love them all. Yeah, what are you doing, huh, Felix? Me? I'm a respectable ex-butcher. My conscience is clear. Yeah. That was mine. Good night, Felix. Outraged innocence is always a good gimmick, Larry. But the amateur tends to overplay it. The pro, Larry, is a guy who establishes a definite behavior pattern at home and never deviates from it, but never. No sly, secret glances when your wife's at the same party. No trips to the kitchen for a quick kiss. Kid stuff. The pro doesn't take any real chances. You're taking a real chance right now, Felix. I'm liable to bust you right in the mouth. Are you? I doubt it. Then you'd have to tell Eve that we were discussing your blonde, wouldn't you? And Eve's pretty close to smelling something in the wind anyway. I uh, spotted that worried white look on her face when I came in. That's why she threw this little shindig, Larry. To draw the straying male back to hearth and home. You take my advice and make love to her the minute everybody leaves. Hey, that's enough, Felix. Don't worry, Larry. Your secret's safe with me. I'm just an ex-butcher, pal. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. You and your blonde don't have to worry. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Don't I? Night, Larry. Nice party. Something's wrong, Larry. Now, what is it? I said nothing. I don't want to start an argument. Neither do I. My folks are going to Palm Springs this weekend. I think I'll go with them. You mean alone? Yes, alone. I have some things I want to think about. Do you mind my going? No, not if you want to do what you want to do. Do you want me to go along? I want to go down that drain. What? Nothing, nothing. Sure, go ahead. with you? I know she went to Palm Springs. Hey, what, what ride do you kids want to go on next? That one. Okay, come on. Come on. You want to go on next, too? You got your tickets for us? You look beautiful. Why did you go away, Larry? Is something wrong? No, no, she just wanted a few days rest, that's all. Do you think she might return the courtesy? What do you mean? Maybe she'd let you get away for a while. 
maybe. You'd like to, wouldn't you? Hold on, Peter. You didn't answer me, Larry. What's wrong? The thing we should have expected sooner or later. Felix knows about us, Maggie. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Well, then we'll have to be more careful, won't we? I don't think it'll cause any trouble. Men don't gossip. That's not the point, but who's going to find out next? Don't you see what can happen? This whole thing could explode around us and hurt a lot of people. I don't want to hurt anyone, Larry. Not you, not me, not anyone. Of course not. That's what we've got to know where we're going. Maggie. Maggie, there's got to be more for us or less. It can't stay the way it is. Don't talk about it, Larry. What do you mean, don't talk about it? We've got to face up with it sometime. I want things to stay the way they are. Without going anywhere with it. Like that ride our kids are on, round and round, no beginning and no end. Do you want to end it? Maggie, I want to begin it. It has begun. Larry, it's got to stay exactly like it is. You can't mean that. I do. I feel like I'm talking to a stranger. Maybe you are. Maybe we should stay away from each other for a while. That's what you want. Come on, the ride's over. First you said the 17th. I said, all right. Then you extended it to the 28th. Now you're trying to tell me it's Very going to be later? Very reasonable. I've got the men working Saturday through Sunday. Look at I don't want to hear about your construction problems. Larry, believe me, I'm doing you everything. You promised me the to... house be ready by the time Roger Alder's book is finished. That's the middle of next month, Mr. Cole. This is I want a certificate of occupancy by then and no excuses. All I can do is try. You better do a lot more than try. I'm giving you an absolute deadline. You meet it. What are you so steamed up about? Yes, I'm a temperamental artist. Trying to get you into your house on time. A couple of days more or less won't do any harm. What's that? It's a proof of my new book jacket. It's attractive. Yeah, I'm beginning to sweat already. The reviews are coming out soon. Did you write the book you wanted to? Yeah. They'll like it. Bye! Yeah! Look, I know my 10% uh, doesn't buy your soul, but uh, you okay? Oh, sure. I I got a few things on my mind. It's be okay. Well, you know where I live. Thanks. Raj, I'm hungry! Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, hungry. She's a very oral type. Always hungry. Well, she's a nice kind of a kid. She's clean, washes my socks, listens to my lousy jokes. Maybe I ought to marry her. My mother was clean. Morning, Abe. Nice day. Beautiful. Hiya, fellas. Hi. Love them all, Brucey. Love them all. We have to wait till the neighbors call to find out where you are. Did you say I could go? Now listen to me. I've got better things to do than to go chasing all over the block looking for you. Do you understand that? Do you understand that, Patrick? Yes, Mom. Hello. Eve, this is Stan Baxter. Oh, hello, Mr. Baxter. How are you? Fine, thanks. Is Larry there? No, no, I'm sorry he's not. Can he call you back? He was supposed to call me yesterday. Have you got a minute, Eve? Well, yes. Yes, certainly. I know Larry asked me not to discuss this with you, but I just have to have an answer on this Hawaiian deal. Well, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I... Uh... 
course, this is something you must decide together, Eve, but I honestly don't understand his hesitation. Eve? Eve. Oh, there you are. Where are the kids? Visiting. Visiting where? Well, ask Linda to pick them up. Stan Baxter phoned. Oh? Mm hmm. Uh, what do you want? What did he want, Larry? I'm listening. Why didn't you tell me about his offer? I wanted to think about it. Alone? I thought we were married. Eve, try not to get upset. Well, why didn't you tell me about it? Why did you have to keep it from me? I'm not keeping it from you. I just want to think about it for a while. Well, for how long? He told me you've been stalling him for five Eve, weeks. He no. thought I was to Eve, blame. please stop shouting. I'll do as I please. If you can hide something as important as this from me, for God's sake, right, Larry, I don't important. know what... It's important. It's important. I just want to get my own ideas clear before I talk to you about it. Well, when did you start doing that? I've always done that. Well, it was my impression we well, usually talk things wrong. over together. And don't you tell me I'm wrong. This time you're wrong, dead wrong. How but could you Eve, possibly hide something as important as moving to Eve, away I for five years? I selling the house, taking the kids out of school. I can't discuss this with you if you're going to scream. I've got to go to Alton. We'll talk about this when I get back. Don't you leave this house, Larry. If you do, you don't have to come back. I'm going, and I'll be back. We'll discuss it then. Raj? Larry? Larry, you old son of a gun. Larry, what are you doing up here? Did you read the reviews? Oh, they came in? Did they? Come in, one hundred percent. They came in. Every one of them, and I broke their backs. <laughs> Scintillating, bright, penetrating. A work of art, the man said. That's wonderful. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, I'm a genius. And I've been sitting up here saying to myself, "Great, you did it. You did it." <laughs> what did I do? All my life. All my life I've been wanting to write a book without caring what they say. I did it. They love it, huh? <laughs> all those years, this is what I've been wanting. And it turns out this is not what I've been wanting at all. Funny, huh? Come on, Rod. You wrote a great book. I wrote a magnificent book. And I sat up here alone. And Drank to the wonderful reviews. All alone. What's the matter with me, Larry? Nothing the matter with you. You should be happy. Snap out of it. <laughs> See old Larry I like? That's the one. Snap out of it. <laughs> you remember what you told me when I was writing the book? You said, you decide what's important and do it. You remember that? That was a long time ago. Yeah, but it's true. You know what's important to me, Larry? What? Nothing. Hmm. Nothing. And I could bust out crying because nothing's oh. important. Tell me, Larry, what's important? Cut it out, Rog. Oh, boy, I envy you. You're married and a family. You know where you're going. Sure. Sure I do. You know what's waiting for me when I get home? A bomb about to explode and I got no place to hide. You want it. Give me some and stop crying because you got rave reviews. I'm sorry. Uh, don't be sorry. Don't ask me what's important because I don't know. I'm such a phony. <laughs> I got a drawer full of manufactured labels. Architect, husband, father, man. I sew them into my clothes. The suits never fit. I always believed in honor, decency. Yeah, maybe they're just labels, too. What is it? I 
got a job I want to take, a woman I want, people who can't be hurt. Oh. I'm hardly the one to pass that advice. Don't lose your head. You didn't invent infidelity. You have been in love, Raj. Really in love? Yeah, I just want to hear her voice. <laughs> you know, the most important thing in the world to me right now is a telephone. There's one in the other room. Hmm. Couldn't pick it up. Why not? But if I do that, it's the beginning. I've never been in love. But I like to feel that way about a woman. And if you do, don't throw it away. It's not that easy to find. Here are your house keys. Feel like I just had a baby. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going out in that street and fall in love with the first girl I see. Then I'm going to drag her up to my new house and she's going to cook scrambled eggs and love me if I never write another lousy book as long as I live. Yeah, you do that. Well, uh, I better go. You know, it's funny. Mm -hmm. We meet as strangers and half the time we part that way. Yeah, and if we ever really get to know another human being, it's a miracle. I like you, Walter. I got the feeling that I'm not going to be seeing much of you anymore. Take care of yourself. Yeah, yeah. well, you too. my mother. Yes, 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 tomorrow it'll be fine. Where? Oh, really, is it finished? I can't wait to see it. Two o'clock, and then we'll talk. Larry? I'm going over to Ramsey, see if I can have these shears shop, and I'll be right back. All Larry's not home. Oh, I, uh, I didn't figure he was. I wanted to talk to you anyway. Oh, well, if you'll forgive me, but Felix, I, I'm just not in the mood right now for talking. Well, this won't take very long, Eve. I, I just wanted to find out what you did with those geraniums. Geraniums? What do you mean? 
Out front. You handle the gardening around here, don't you? Yes. Well, they're coming along beautifully. Betty and I wanted to plan some, but we wanted to know first. Your hair looks different to him. Well, I was just about to take a shower. Oh? Well, I won't keep you very long. Why don't you let your hair fall free around your face, Abe? You have such a lovely face. Thank you. Felix, all we did with those flowers was follow the nursery instructions, that's all. And when did you start to plant them? Oh, I don't know. In the spring, I think. I don't know. Why don't you ask Larry when he gets back? Well, Larry may not get back for quite some time, Eve. Hmm? Why don't you take off the ribbon, Eve? Listen, Felix, I don't have time for this kind of foolishness. Take it off, Eve. I think I'd better turn on some lights. What for? It's getting dark outside. Really coming down. Do you like to watch a storm, Eve? I love storms. Listen, Felix. I've got a lot of things to do. Was it very painful, Eve, taking off the ribbon? Was it? No. Now, why don't you? Come on, Eve, you want to, and I know it. Get out. Tell me, architect, how am I any different than you, huh? Did you find him? Yeah. 
I've been sitting here wondering what gave Felix a peculiar notion that I'd be an easy mark. Do you know why, Larry? It seems so simple, so simple. It explains so many things, so simple. Don't touch me. Eve, please. What, Larry? Oh, I know. I know. I guess I've known all along. There is another woman. I knew it. I knew. I want you to leave the house, Larry. I don't want you near the children. I don't want to see you. I want to forget that I ever loved you or knew you. I just want you to go. Go wherever you want to go. Do whatever you want to. Go with her. Go to hell. Just get out of my sight. Can't you be happy here? Is it me? Because it, if it is me, Larry, I want you to tell me where I was wrong. I can change. It's just that I don't... It's just that I don't know what I should do. Please don't cry. I can't help it. Larry, I want us to be the way we used to be. I don't understand what's happened. I don't know us anymore. Where are we? I don't know, Eve. I don't know. Larry. Oh, oh Larry, please help me. You see, I, I... I don't think I can live without you. Please, Larry.
be peeking in windows. It's beautiful. Oh, it's been so long. Do you know how long it's been? Yes. Maggie. I'm going away. to this house? Hmm? Yes, I guess there's one here someplace. I left the key here for the lobby. Oh, where is it? Oh. Some things I'd like to change. Poor Mr. Alter. Hmm? He doesn't know this is really our house. You know what I'd do if we lived here? No. What would you do? I'd build a moat around this place. Keep the whole world out. No friends? No visitors? No one, just you and me. I do love you, Maggie. I know that. And I love you. Mr. Coe, is that you? Oh. Hi, Frank. Hi. I figured I'd stop up and have another look around. Maggie, this is Mr. DeLabia. How do you do? Hello. You know, I really got a kick out of this house. I never built one like it before. Well, I've got to check up on a few items. Excuse me. You got quite a husband, Mrs. Cole. Bye, Larry. 